Hi guys, it's Monday the 9th of April. I'm sitting at my desk with the world's biggest cup of tea. This teacup is from Tesco, in case anyone is wondering. This is my third in my series of new weekly vlogs and I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description box down below. I'm doing these weekly vlogs, one, because it's fun, and two, because you've asked to see what it's like doing the kind of work that I do, writing books and working freelance in the book industry. And it's difficult to show you one specific day because all of my days are different. So this way you get to see a little bit of all the different things that I do. This week is gonna be quite unusual for me in that I'm away from my desk most of this week. Mostly I am, you know, glued to my desk. Not so this week, today I am, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm away from it. And then I'm also in town on Friday for a little bit as well. As I said, it's Monday morning and now I've got to do a radio interview. It's on the phone, so I don't have to go anywhere in the center of town to do it. And I'm very glad of that because looking out the window, it is miserable outside. This weekend, as well as other things, I put all of my thick woolly winter jumpers in a box very optimistically and put them in the back of a cupboard. Today, I had to go fishing around to get this one out again because it's freezing. It's freezing. It's the 9th of April and it's freezing. So I'm gonna go do that radio interview and then I'm gonna do all my planning for the week. So getting my weekly planner all laid out, sorting out all of my to-do lists. I talked about how I organize and schedule my time in a completely separate video, which I'll link up here and down below if you would like to go and watch that for tips, inspiration, love of stationery. And I will check in with you guys in a little bit. Hi guys, it is late in the afternoon now. I have filmed, edited and uploaded my March wrap up. I've answered emails. I've been sending out writing workshops to people who signed up to take writing workshops with me this week and have sent feedback to people who were due feedback this week. I thought I would show you two books that came in the post today. The first one is this one here, it's a poetry pamphlet and it's called Dear Body by Hannah Hogson and she has a booktube channel which I will link in the description box down below. This is a collection of poems exploring body and disability and it has a hint of fairy tale as well so I look forward to reading that one. The other book that I picked up is this one here called The Sea Beast Takes a Wife and this is a short story collection that I spied over on Simon's channel and thought I would rather fall in love with. It says, the author reveals that aliens can help us think about loss, time travel is just another way to talk about guilt and sea monsters may have a thing or two to teach us about love. I'm hoping that this might be a good one. So yeah, it is currently, what time is it? It is 20 to six. At six o'clock I'm doing an Instagram live where I am talking about the importance of bookish communities. I'm doing three Instagram lives this week as work for Studio Canal. So to talk about the importance of bookish communities, I'm gonna be talking about people that I researched when I was writing the bookshop book. So I'm gonna quickly go through this, remind myself of what I wrote because it feels so, so long ago, it's four years ago now. So I'm gonna remind myself of some things that I wanna talk about. After I've done the Instagram live, I need to read the last 50 pages of this book here, which is A Place For Us by Fatima Mirza. I've been talking about it everywhere because I'm really, really, really loving it. And I'm hoping that it doesn't get ruined in the last 50 pages because I've said very publicly that this book I think is gonna be my favorite book of the year so far. And I'm just really crossing my fingers that it remains that way. Only 50 pages left out of 400. So I'm pretty sure it's all gonna be fine. The reason that I'm reading this book is because tomorrow I have to go and interview Sarah Jessica Parker, which is not something that I thought I would ever say but that is what I'm doing tomorrow. Sarah Jessica Parker has set up an imprint of Hogarth called SJP for Hogarth. Hogarth is part of Vintage, which is part of Random House, which is part of Penguin Random House. And tomorrow she is in London and I'm chairing, chairing, no, hosting the Vintage podcast. And I'm gonna to talk to her about why she loves books and why she loves this book and why I love this book. And we're just gonna have a natter and hopefully it'll be lovely. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'll let you know how I get on. Don't tell anyone. It's Biscoff spread for anyone wondering. So, so good and so bad for me. It is Tuesday. It is about half five, I think. I just got back. I interviewed Sarah Jessica Parker today and she was lovely. And that was for the Vintage Podcast. So that'll be up in June. I couldn't film anything when I was there. I couldn't take any pictures or anything like that. So use your imaginations and you can listen to that podcast when it goes out in June. I will let you know when it's available. And I'm also hoping that I'll be able to do something with Fatima, the author of the book, when she's over in June doing some publicity, maybe a podcast for my own channel. We'll see what her schedule is like. But 
now that I'm back, I have to read this book here, which is Luck is the Hook by MTS Darker. I'm reading it because this week it is London Book Fair. London Book Fair exhausts me just thinking about it and I'm not even there yet. London Book Fair is a huge publishing industry event and it is intense. There are so many thousands of people there. I will take you along tomorrow and you will see how intense it is. Um, I'm going there all day tomorrow. Ford Arts Foundation are doing a few different events. They have a Poets Corner this year with the Poet of the Fair, which is Imtiaz Darker, and at 4pm I'm chairing an event with her talking about poetry, but there are also other poetry events before that that I'm going to have to go to. And what else am I doing? I'm also meeting up with Chintzia for coffee afterwards, which will be very nice. If you don't know who Chintzia is, I will link her booktube channel in the description box down below. So I'm going to go ahead and read this book now, make notes, prepare myself for the morning. In the morning I'm actually going over to Jean's early, I have to be there about half seven-ish because we're doing the final Instagram live for Studio Canal and then after that I'm heading to the book fair. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good evening guys, it is Wednesday evening. Here I am with my cup of tea because I'm predictable. <laughs> it's been quite a long day. It is now about half nine and I've just got in from London Book Fair. I can't emphasize how huge the building is. And I had lots of people messaging me saying, you know, what advice do you have for going to London Book Fair? And my advice is just know that you're gonna get lost. <laughs> it's, it's massive. And um, I filmed, I think one panning shot of one of the not even an auditorium, I don't know what you call it, one of the squares, but it's it's such a tiny part that's not even like an eighth of the whole thing, it's massive. So I was there for the poetry symposium this morning and we were talking about the poetry industry over the last few years. Do you know that poetry book sales have gone up 42% in the last four years and how awesome is that? Um, and we we're talking about lots of different things to do with poetry and publishing. And then after that, I met up with a few people. In fact, I ran into several people today. I ran into Claire over at Reading Bukowski, whose channel I'll link down below. Annie from Am I Right came along to my event in the afternoon, whose channel I'll also link down below. And then I got to have a coffee with Chintzia after the book fair, which was really lovely before I headed home. Um, so yeah, the event in the afternoon was with Imtia's Darker, who was the poet of the fair. She's also published by Blood Axe, and she's fantastic. I will link her collection, her new collection, in the description box down below. So that was my day, we just got in, we're gonna make dinner, we've got Gusto to make, which is kinda along the same lines as HelloFresh, in no way sponsored. We sometimes get it when we know that we're gonna be out late in the evenings, cause Mr M also worked late tonight. So we're gonna make that, and then I'm gonna drink all of this tea and consume these mini eggs, and we're gonna catch up on Versace, which we've missed because it started at nine, but we'll get it on catch up. Tomorrow I'm going up to Saltburn, which is kind of near Hartlepool-ish in the northeast, which feels like I'm nearly going home, not all the way home, just a little bit, to go and do some work with Carmen Marcus, who is a writer who's doing this big project that she's got um, funding for from the Arts Council, and I'm helping her with an area of that. So I've got a train, I'm gonna have to leave at seven in the morning, and I'm not gonna get back until about 11 o'clock at night, so tomorrow's gonna be another long day, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to film much, but I'll film some shots of the train and maybe the sea, because, you know, I get to see the sea tomorrow, and that's an excellent thing. Good night.
look, she's wearing dungarees again. Is anyone surprised? No, no one is surprised. Hi, it is Friday. Yesterday, I was working with Carmen Marcus, who is lovely. She's a writer, and I first came across her when I was a vlogger in residence at the Durham Book Festival, and she was doing a song slash poem, and it basically made me cry, and I will insert footage of that here. The boat to a better place lays too low in the water. Not one of the bodies lands in the same place twice. If there had been made of feathers, it would have been a different story. You do not let go of the case. You know if you open it too early, it will just cry out. <laughs> So at the moment she's doing a project called The Book of Godless Verse, which she was actually doing when she was doing that. And she was eight months pregnant then, I think, and now she has her little boy, so I got to have some cuddles yesterday with him, which was very cute. Um, so yeah, she's doing this project called The Book of Godless Verse, and I will leave links to Carmen in the description box down below because you should definitely go and follow her because part of the project is her putting stuff out online, which she's going to be doing in the future, and I was helping her with that. Um, and I think she's got lots of exciting ideas. And if you haven't read her book, How Saints Die, I'll also link that in the description box down below. She's currently long listed for the Desmond Elliott Prize and the paperback's coming out in June, but you can get the hardback at the moment. The paperback cover looks beautiful. She showed me the cover of that. But yeah, I finished work with her and then I, she lives a five minute walk from the sea. So I had to go and say hello to the sea before I went home because, you know, I miss the sea. I grew up by it and I miss it. So I went and waved at the sea and then I came all the way home. I realized I was on trains for nine hours yesterday. That's a lot of train. Um, but yeah, it was great. And I got back at about 11ish um, and fell into bed. And now it's Friday. I spent the morning doing emails and workshop stuff and a bit of laundry. Am I really sad now that I really enjoy laundry? Does this mean that I'm old? I sense this means either that I'm old or boring or both. I'm not sure. Um, and I'm about to go out now and have lunch with my agent Charlie. We've got lots of stuff to catch up on and it's always lovely to see him. He's my fave. Um, if you haven't seen a video that Charlie and I did ages ago actually, I will link it in the description box down below. If you're interested in what a literary agent does and how to get one, you can go and check out that video. Then one, once I've had lunch with him, I need to come home and crack on with forward prize reading because the deadline for me submitting my favourites that I want to discuss at our judging meeting is fast approaching. And there's a lot of poetry this year. It's been a bit of a bumper year for submissions. So I will check in with you when I get back. Goodbye. For some reason, guys, Lola likes to climb on top of cardboard boxes. This is one of the forward prize boxes. We have eight of these, eight, and they're all filled with poetry books. You probably can't tell how big it is actually with Lola on top. You having fun there? Have you had enough of being on top of the books now? Oh, are you leaving me? Are you going away? What are you doing now? <laughs> is this what we, are we ending the vlog like this? Is this what we're doing? Because now she's climbed on me, you see. Yeah, it's yawning, it's been a long week. Hello, Lola. So, Johnny and I had a lovely lunch. We went to Rock, which is a Scandinavian restaurant. You would like it, Lola, you would like it. He's recently signed the chef there to write a cookbook. Uh, so that's why we went there. Thank you very much. And um, the food was amazing. So if you're in London, recommend it. I will leave a link to it in the description box down below. I'm gonna sign off for the week now because I'm gonna have to crack on with forward prize reading. And obviously I can't film that because it's all, Secret judging, etc, etc. As I said, one of those boxes, we have eight of those and all of them are full, 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 full of poetry books. And what we also have, oh, it's over there. I'll insert a cutaway because I don't want to move Lola. Um, a huge lever arch file because there are three categories in the forward prizes for poetry. There is the best overall collection, best first collection and best individual poems. So I also have a lever arch file full of individual poems that have been submitted from literary journals. Ooh, 
excuse my phone. And then when we finish the judging, well, before we finish the judging, actually, we're compiling an anthology of some of our favourite poems from this year's prize. And the Forward Prize anthology is my favourite poetry anthology ever. So I will link past year's anthologies in the description box down below if you fancy going and checking them out. This week I feel has been a bit of me running around saying I just did this and I just did this instead of showing you what I'm doing but that's because I was chairing events, interviewing people and I can't film and do that at the same time or else I was doing one-on-one um, -on -one work with people and I can't really film that either but hopefully you have enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comment section down below what you have been up to this week. I will film another vlog next month but of course I'll be back next week sometime with another bookish video. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm sending lots of bookish love to you all and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.